Hi, I'm Kevin Dorma. Welcome to part four of my series on the water side dynamics of a once through steam generator. This section will cover how the water side responds to a sudden increase and decrease in boiler feed water temperature. So what causes a sudden change in temperature? Let me explain a mechanism that I have seen in several operating plants. Here's a sketch of a typical boiler feed water system in a SAG-D facility. Water at 80 degrees is stored in a tank and is pumped through a set of low pressure pumps to approximately 3000 kPa. Heat from the process is recovered in a set of heat exchangers and increases the water temperature to 150 degrees. Then, two of the high pressure boiler feed water pumps raise the pressure to that sufficient to raise steam in the OTSG. The third pump, C, is offline. In this example, the total flow rate of water taken by the OTSG is 600 cubic meters an hour, and that produces a temperature rise of 70 degrees across the heat recovery section. At some point, the operations team will want to turn on pump C, most likely to do maintenance on one of the other pumps. The typical pump start procedure in a SAG-D facility is to close the outlet of the pump that we are starting and run the pump to the startup pond through a minimum flow bypass. The minimum continuous flow rate for this pump is in the order of 100 cubic meters an hour. So when the third pump is started, there's an extra 100 cubic meters an hour of coolant going through the high pressure pumps. And, one, and that 100 is being wasted. So the total coolant flow rate through the heat recovery section has now increased from 600 cubic meters an hour to 700. And since the amount of heat recovered is constant, this means the temperature rise has gone down. So rather than having a temperature rise of 70 degrees, the temperature rise is now only 60 degrees. Thus, starting the third pump causes the temperature of the boiler feed water to drop by 10 degrees. Then, the pump is gradually cut into the header. The flow rate through the pump gradually increases and the minimum flow control is no longer needed. The, flow, the total flow rate through all of the pumps drops to 600 cubic meters an hour, and we are back to the water gaining 70 degrees across the heat recovery section. Shutting down a pump is similar. Pump B is slowly blocked in and operated at minimum flow. Pumps, one and, uh, pumps A and C deliver 600 cubic meters an hour to the OTSG, and pump B wastes 100 cubic meters an hour the boiler feed water sees a 60 degree rise. When pump B is shut down, there is no more water being wasted and the total flow rate immediately drops to 600 cubic meters an hour and the temperature rise is now 70 degrees. This is how the pump swap procedure can result in a sudden increase and decrease in boiler feed water temperature. Another mechanism is aggressive tuning on steam separator level, which adds heat to the boiler feed water. Let's start with a sudden increase in feed water temperature. We observe a sudden increase in the measured steam quality, but we also observe a sudden decrease in the steam separator level. How can we explain both phenomenon, and is this behavior a concern? We will start with boiler feed water at 150 degrees and making 74% quality steam. Then, we will increase the water temperature by 30 degrees to see what happens in the OTSG. And we will note that the liquid volume in the OTSG currently is 9 cubic meters. The hot front slowly moves through the convection section. The hot front is changing from a harsh step to a more gradual smear. This is due to the thermal mass of the steel in the OTSG piping. About four minutes in, the hot front is near the boiling point, and we can see that something interesting is about to happen. The upstream, front, the upstream side of the hot front will reach the boiling point at eight cubic meters an hour. This will cause one cubic meter of water to be quickly displaced. 
the hot front pushes through the boiling point and a slug of water is fired down the OTSG like a cannon. The outlet enthalpy quickly dips low because of the extra mass of water and then snaps high to the expected value. The trend of actual and measured steam quality illustrates the effect of this extra mass leaving the OTSG. For the first four minutes, there is no impact to the steam quality because the change in temperature has not yet impacted the liquid holdup. Then the actual quality, the black line, dips low when the extra water is kicked out. The measured Venturi quality, the red line, spikes high with the extra water and reads over 100%. Then everything settles out. This sudden change takes place over about a minute. The level in the steam separator is the best indicator of what is actually happening in the OTSG. The level jumps up when the extra water is kicked out and then slowly draws back down because the OTSG then delivers less water to the separator. The next change is a sudden 30 degree drop in boiler feed water temperature. The water holdup starts at 9 cubic meters. Now cold front creeps toward the boiling point. we can see that the upstream side of the cold front will reach the boiling point at 10 cubic meters. This will require the OTSG to accumulate an additional one cubic meter of water. This also means that there will be less water available to flow downstream for keeping the radiant section cool. The cold front pushes through the boiling point and the water accumulates. The enthalpy in the radiant section increases because there is less water available to keep the radiant section cool. The steam leaving the OTSG is briefly superheated. Then the enthalpy dips back down to the expected value. The trend of the actual and measured steam quality shows the opposite patterns that were observed with the increase in boiler feed water temperature. The actual quality spikes high because there is insufficient water exiting the OTSG to keep it cool. A trip on superheat may occur, but the measured Venturi quality dips low because of the low mass flow rate through the Venturi and results in a low pressure drop. This is interpreted as a low steam quality. The level in the separator again tells us what is really happening. The level plummets when the cold front reaches the boiling location and the radiant section starts to boil dry then the level gradually rises because the OTSG is delivering more water. Sudden temperature changes are the most difficult operating condition to manage. This produces an inverse response. A sudden drop in temperature causes a delayed spike in the steam quality, then followed by the expected decrease in steam quality. The measured steam quality, however, provides the opposite response. The drop in temperature causes the measured quality to dip excessively low before reaching the final value. This can cause a significant control problem if the measured steam quality is used to modulate the firing rate. The false steam quality reading can cause overfiring when the radiant section is dry. Sudden temperature changes may be more serious than they appear. The best solution is to identify procedural solutions to avoid sudden water temperature changes, particularly those associated with pump swaps. As well, careful selection of controller tuning objectives can ensure that disturbances, such as steam separator level control, cause more gradual disturbances to the feed water temperature. Finally, advanced control strategies can be used to ensure that OTSG steam quality controller does not take the wrong action when this bad actor shows up. To wrap up, OTSG dynamics are dictated by changes in liquid holdup. This is similar to the shrink and swell phenomenon in a drum boiler. Everything plays out over five minutes because this is the time needed to flow through the liquid filled section. Start OTSGs at higher boiler feed water flow rates there is less surge for the startup valve to manage. Use the slow response to a change in the firing rate and boiler feed water flow rate to justify softening the pass flow deviation and steam quality alarms.
implement procedural changes to avoid rapid boiler feed water temperature changes and identify heat sources to the boiler feed water that can be managed with slower controller tuning. This concludes the series on the water side dynamics of an oil field once through steam generator. I'm Kevin Dorma. Please visit my webpage at www.kevindorma.ca for more information. Bye for now.